And we are live. Okay, so we're gonna do lesson 10 today. I kind of bungled it in the first section when I went through this. So I wanna try being a little bit smarter than the fish on this go around. What I'd like you to do, and I will share my screen. Go over to the website, go to lesson 10. The first thing I want you to do, go to this piece part drawing template file, download that and put it in your SolidWorks template folder. Okay, and what this file is, it's your uh, basic first two pages of a drawing. It's gonna have the border, it's got the title block, it's got all that good stuff in it for page one and two. Uh, I know some people think that I should have you make that and create it, but the bottom line is at every company I've ever been at, you're just given a drawing border because that's your contract with manufacturing. So you don't ever want to deviate. You always given one. So I'm going to follow suit and just give you guys a drawing border. I'm sorry, I missed it. So are we supposed to download that drawing template? You're going to download this one file and you're going to put it in your templates folder. Okay. Cause do I have to open it or anything? Because when I tried opening it, it just says it, nope. it won't it, let me. It's not, it's not openable. Okay. Not that kind of file. All right. So how do we add it to the template again? Uh, just tell you what, just do this. So do a download. Come over here or however you want, go to your downloads folder. So here's piece part drawing template. I'm just gonna cut that and then I'm gonna come over to documents. And let's see, SolidWorks templates. And I'm just gonna paste it right in there. I think I had you guys call it templates 2020 or something like that. But wherever you put your templates, go ahead and paste it right in, right here. Okay, you guys all good with that? Yes. Okay. Next thing. Uh, sorry, I just came in. Uh, which ones do you want us to put in? Okay. So go to the class website, lesson 10, grab piece part drawing template, this one right here. Download that, put it in your templates folder, which for you guys should be something like documents, SolidWorks templates, put it right there. All right, thank you. Okay, so that's gonna handle page one and two. There will come a time when you're gonna need a third page when we do assemblies. The next thing I want you to do, go under your documents. So right here, make sure you're not out on OneDrive. Make sure this is on your local machine. And I want you to create SolidWorks formats 2020. Just like I've got there. How do we add in a document? Uh, you can just, op so for example, if I go to downloads, I can click on this file. I'm gonna right click 
and hit copy. Alternately, if you just want to move it, you can hit cut. Go to your destination. So in this case, SolidWorks templates. Right click and hit paste. Yeah, I meant like on the, the last thing you just told us to do, make the new document. You're going to make a new folder. Oh, okay. yeah, how do you do that? Okay, so just come under documents, come off here and into the white space. And go new and folder. Give it a name. Correctly spelled, of course. And press enter and you'll have a new folder. What should the new folder be named again? Name it something like SolidWorks formats, SW underscore formats. I called mine SolidWorks format 2020. With any luck, you guys won't be taking this class twice. I'm not smart enough to pass it. I have to keep taking it every year. Okay, everybody got the folder made. I hear silence, I'm hoping that's a good thing. Okay, so let's go back over to the website. Now what I want you to do is grab this file and download it. B-size sheet two format. Download that. It should go into your downloads folder. If you're not sure how to do that, click on it, right click, hit download. On your local machine, you'll then see B size sheet two format. I'm gonna right click I'll hit cut, that puts it on my clipboard. Then come over to your formats folder, in my case, SolidWork formats 2020. Right click and hit paste. And the copy is moved over. Are we all good with that? I believe I'm all set. Okay, so that's one good one. That's a good sign. All right, let's go over to SolidWorks. First thing I'd like you to do is just test that everything is set up properly. Click on a new part. So when SOLIDWORKS templates fires up, you should see your modeling template and you should see the piece part drawing template. Does everybody see that? Uh, just a moment. I, I do just not need a minute. see that. I just need a minute for SOLIDWORKS to open up. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the second one. Okay. So then your template mapping is probably not correct. To fix that, we're gonna to go to the options, little gear icon. We'll come down to file location. Choose document templates. Make sure the second line is pointing at your template folder. Okay, I'll give that a shot real quick. Yep, 
You mean File Explorer? No, File Locations, I see it. Uh, okay. Real quick, I was late by five minutes. Did we make that file within the five minutes? No, we downloaded it from the website. Okay. And right. that, I have... that is on lesson 10. So you're going to put piece part drawing template in your templates folder. I need you to create under documents, something called like SolidWorks formats 2020 and then paste in B size sheet two format. This you're gonna download off the website as well. And it's right here. Okay, cool, thank you. Other issues, folks? Uh, Mr. Abades, I had some problems going into the Zoom call. Um, did I miss anything important? Okay, so what you're gonna do, we're setting up for drafting today. Okay. What we're gonna do is I want you to go to lesson 10 on the website, mm -hmm. download piece part drawing template, put it in your templates folder. It should be under your documents, your computers, okay. my documents. Thank you. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is I need you to create a folder. So this PC documents SolidWorks formats 2020. Make something like that. Put the other file in it, this B size sheet two format. Once you're done with that, we go to SolidWorks. When we create a new part, we should see my cool part template for modeling and then the piece part drawing template. Thank you. Okay, I think I got the uh, document issue worked out. Okay. I'll let you know if it causes any more problems. I had, four thing, I had four things under document templates. When I was done, instead of two, but I went to SolidWorks and I could find the thing in the right folder, so. As long as you got the right stuff in the right folder, we're good. Okay, so if that's good, next thing. Here comes the tricky one. We're going to go into file locations. We're going to hit the drop down. We're going to go to sheet formats. Okay. And we're going to add a line which points to that new formats folder that you've made. So I'm sorry, where did you get you the, that? the file locations? Little gear icon, go to file locations. Hit the drop down under sheet formats. we we'll come down to sheet formats. Add this line. That's the file we just made, right? That's the folder you just made, yes. Oh, right, right, right. How do we, how do we add the line? Click on the button that says add. So in my case, if I was going to add it again, I would click add. And then I'm just going to use this to surf over to wherever the folder is. And SW formats 2020. I hit select folder and it adds another one. Okay. Would that be the one that started with the B or was that the template that we downloaded? Mm. So you should have downloaded the B size. This 
format goes in your format folder. This template goes in your template folder. Okay, thank you. Yeah. This thing asked me if I wanted it to make changes to the device. Absolutely, go for it. Yes, Is that's that what a, I should be seeing. Yes, that's a Windows thing. Everybody should see that. And then just press OK, OK, OK. Yeah, go do it. Whatever. Yeah, go do it. Wait, are we adding the are we adding the format template? I mean the format uh, folder. You are adding B size sheet two to the format folder. So mine, for whatever reason, won't show up like the B size thing. I'm in the folder that I put it in, but it's not there and it's not in my downloads. Correct. It will not show up because you're just you're defining a pathway. You're not trying to find a particular file. These are not files that you're going to open up. These are just like setup files and definition files. They're not like part files. So once we add it in there, do we hit OK? Yes. And then say OK, OK, OK. Um, sorry again, Ms. Obeda. So after that I added both of the two documents in the respective folders, yes. um, what do I have to do with SOLIDWORKS? So the only thing I would do is just check it. So let me get out of this. So let's just do a function check to make sure it's seeing all the stuff we put in there. So create a new part under your templates folder. You should see the piece part drawing uh, template, which is right there. So that's good. That means it's in the right place. And we'll have to go a little bit further to test the other one. So the other one, the drawing format, that's something that we're going to use when we go to add another drawing page. So for example, when we do assemblies, I'm going to jump up and down and harp on you guys that page one locates the object, page two defines all the part number of every object in the layout, part, page three is going to be your bill of materials that associate the part number to the balloon callouts. And we will go through ad nauseum what all that means. Okay. Okay. All good. Anybody else got any uh, issues with their computer at this point? Um, I got something real quick. Uh, when we get to, we go into the, um, all the stuff and we have to add a folder to the, uh, I, I don't remember actually, where we went to the gear icon, went to the sheet uh, submenu and then had to add something and it add that line. Uh, what were we supposed to add? Was it our templates, our formats? What was it? It's the pathway to your formats folder. Formats, all right, I added my templates, I'm gonna go back. So file location, and then you're gonna go to sheet formats, and your last line should be the pathway to the formats folder you just created. Gotcha, thank you. Okay. All righty then. I think we are good to go. over that one more time. Sure, Laura. Thank you. So just go over how to check that everything's in the right place? Yeah. Okay. So f first off, just cr click on new part. You should see two entries in your templates folder. You should see the piece part drawing template. Hopefully that's there and it looks like the preview that you're seeing on my screen. The next thing, go into the little gear icon for the options, go to file locations, come down to sheet formats. Under sheet formats, you should see a pathway to the new formats folder that you just created. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Abedes, I do not see that second line that you just talked about. Just okay. Now. Then go ahead and hit add. Mm -hmm. 
And what you're going to do is you will go documents, go to SolidWorks formats, click select folder, and it will add another line. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so hopefully we've got all that set up. Everybody's good to go. If you're running into any errors or stuff like that, I can certainly uh, help you out after class. So, lesson 10. Uh, we've already done exam review. Did anybody want to talk about anything on the exam? Anybody have any issues, weirdness, something they really need explaining that wasn't covered in office hours? Oh, the one thing I will say is that, Mr. Abdeza, uh, did you see my complaint with the uh, uh, cosmetic thread mine? Did you see what was going on with that? Or... Did it not show uh, for you, for my part? Honestly, after 75 exams, I just don't remember what the issue was. So clue me in. So what I did was instead of sweeping on the muffler, I did a fillet throughout the entire or the entirety of the pool handle. Okay. For some reason, the cosmetic thread was broken up into four different parts, each 90 degrees. And I had to do it four times and every single time the cosmetic thread grew to the point where uh, when I did the fourth one, the cosmetic thread was just gray. Just one side was completely gray, one side was almost gray, one side was fine, and the other side was a little bit big. So I'm a little confused on that because the thread was only 3 8 16 and one inch long. So it should have gone from the tip of the handle pretty much to the center line of the pipe. It shouldn't have gone any further than that. Yeah, I know, it, but it did. Because I had selected it multiple times, and every time it selected a different face, it doubled money. So did you click blind so that you could specify a depth to thread to? Yes. Okay, then I will have to take a look at that. That's really weird. Yes. Yeah, you should have been able to just type in the number and poof, done. So, okay. So if I don't address that in the grading, then send me an email to my main.edu and remind me to go in and check it out. Uh, I didn't knock points off for it, but I would like you to take a look at it so I can understand what's going on. Fair enough. Go ahead and send me an email as a reminder and I will look at it. All right. Okay, anything else, folks? I hear a lot of crickets chirping. Okay. Again, if there's something you want to talk about privately, totally fine with that. We'll go over whatever you guys want. Uh, but for right now, since it's quiet, we will move on. All right, so let's see. Modified radius, that's not a problem. That was solved in 2018. We just did this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think rather than going through the slides, let's just do an example. Let's actually make a print so you can see what this thing looks like and what it does and how it works. I think that'd be the best way to go about this. And probably the best thing to do is come on over, go to lesson 10 and download this class example wedge. And you should get something on the screen that looks like this. And there, that's actually what you should see. 
I modified it in the last class. My screen's showing that same thing. That's a good thing. What does it mean crash report? Crash report? Oh, typically, wait, typically crash report means you ran out of RAM and SolidWorks is gonna shut down. Oh wait, this box isn't on your screen. It's just showing on top of Zoom. I just put in another 16 and it seemed to work fine. It said I had like that much available. As long as you've got 16 uh, gigs of RAM, you should be fine. I have 20 total. What's going on? Uh, so I can tell you that at least on Dell machines, they like to have all the same amount of RAM in all four sockets. So I don't know if that's messing with you or what exactly is going on. Well, I x up the box and it I set the box and I don't see it anymore, so we'll see. Okay. So let's pretend that we want to make a drawing of this object. So what we're going to do, is we're going to click on file and make drawing from part. We will choose our piece part drawing template that we just downloaded and say, okay. And something like this should appear. Now, the, the drawing views are not in the correct places, but that's okay. Because I just had to put some views on so that the data would come across and remember when I got all crazy about part attributes? Well, here's why I got crazy over part attributes. So this drawing is looking at the attributes and what you put in description is right here. What you put in part number is populating right in here. What you put in the revision is getting put right here. This other stuff is put right on the drawing itself. So this resides only in this file. What's really nice about this is that this drawing file and the model are associatively linked. Okay, so if I change something in the model, it's gonna be reflected on the drawing. So, sorry, I was. Go ahead. Um, you went from, what was the step from the part to the paper? Okay. So to get the drawing, to make it, make a blueprint of an object, it's file, make drawing from part. Choose the piece part template, say okay. I see, thanks. Is this in the same, how is this related to the part? Okay, so this file, this drawing file, which is completely separate from the part, is linked to the part. Whenever I open this drawing, it knows to go looking for that particular component that I made the drawing from. So for example, let's go change the model and take a look at how this, uh, this drawing updates. So if you wanna do that over here in the drawing manager, let's just expand one of these views. And you can see from the view, here's our part model right here. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say open part. That brings me back to the part. And now let's change something. So for example, maybe I want to, oh, 
I'm going to get rid of one of these tap tools. So I'll edit the feature. And I'll delete the point that created that hole. I'll say, what button did you hit to get you back to the part? Okay. Okay, so when I was in the drawing, see right over here on the left, here's the different views on the drawing. If you, uh, if you double click or click on the little triangle, underneath it is the part that's shown in the view. Right click, say open part. And now you're in the component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my model. So I'm just going to get rid of one of these, one of these holes as an example. There, it's gone. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to worry about that. I should go in and fix this under constraint sketch. But suffice it to say, I've changed my model. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come right over here to the close button. I'm going to close the window. And now you can see that my views have all updated. So there used to be a quarter inch hole over here, that's now gone. Now, something that's very, very, very important, folks. When you start doing your drafting homework, you must send me the model and the drawing because they are linked together. If you send me just the drawing, all I get is an X in the view and I can't see any of the work you've done and all your dimensions disappear. Okay, so always, always, always send me the model with the drawing. Okay. So that's a demonstration of how the model is associative to the drawing. If I was really smart when I set up my model, I can actually make associative dimensions between this drawing view back to the model. I could change the model right in here. Wait, I, how do I, I have the, um, the model open. How do I get to the drawing from the model? Okay. So you got the model open. Mm -hmm. Did you already create the drawing? Are you just trying to go back? Or are you trying to create it initially? Create it initially. Okay. Oh, make drawing from part. Yeah. Choose the template, say okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. So now, one of the things that's important as you're setting up your drawing is establishing the front view. If the object does not have a commonly understood front view, you know, for example, we know what the front of a car looks like. We know what the front of a house looks like. If you do not have that, then what you do is you make the front view, this view right here, as the view with the fewest dotted lines or the fewest hidden lines, okay? So I'm gonna delete these views and all I'm doing is left clicking and I'm just pressing delete. I'll even get rid of that. Okay, so there's my front view. And I can left click, hold down, I can drag it wherever I want at this point. 
So if I need to make views from this front view, the way you do that, insert, drawing view, and project it. Click on the first view, drag up, click on the source view, drag over. If you drag at a 45 degree, you get the isometric. Isometric is this thing. Now look what happens when I move the front view or the parent view. Okay, everything moves together. And this goes back to the glass box idea. So if I put this object in a glass box, I project the edges out onto the glass and I unfold it, all of the edges should line up. Okay. And I am going to be merciless on that. That is right up there with cut extruding circles. Only this is actually more important because this tells the machinist where to look and where you're describing. So really, really important. The other thing, when you set up drawings, you absolutely want to make sure that the hidden lines are turned on. You have lots of control over your views. So let's click on this front view. Let's take a look at our options for the views. So for example, if I do an import annotation and I import the design annotation, here are the dimensions from my sketches. Okay, so that's kind of nice. That will do a bunch of my drafting for me if I set the drawing up properly as I'm thinking about the model. The other nice thing is if you do your dimensions this way, this becomes associative to the model. So for example, if I change the 4.0, say I'll change it to four and a half, Say okay, I'll use the rebuild little stoplight. The view changes, but also the model has changed. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna open the part, click on evaluate measure. Here's the edge that I changed and it is in fact four and a half inches. Okay, so you've got that bi-directional associativity going on. Okay, but we don't always get you know, exactly the dimensions we need. So we can come right up here to smart dimension, and maybe we need this dimension. The smart dimension up here is how we're gonna add dimensions to our blueprints. Okay, so if you don't get everything you need, add the dimensions with smart dimensions. Make sure that in your views, the hidden lines, the internal stuff is visible. Okay, so make sure that your hidden lines are on all through there. That's another huge thing that I harp on. The isometric right here. This is a little bit different, okay. In the isometric, we want it to look solid. It's a visualization aid for the reader. So when I click on the view, I'm gonna come over, and I'm gonna click on hidden lines removed. That turns off all of the hidden lines. We can also control the view scale. So I could just go with the one-to-one -one scale that's down here, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. 
I'll do a custom and let's see about one to two or half scale. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay. The next thing you're probably going to need to do is you're probably going to have to change the title block. Okay, I am notorious for dinging people that don't fill out the title block. It must, must, must be done. So if you want to change what's down here in the drawing title, the part number, the rev, that is all being pulled from the model. In order to change that, you just come over to one of the views, any one of the views, open up the part, and now we're going back to those attributes that we created. So file, properties, here we are in the custom window. And under description, I'm gonna put my change title. One of my other pet peeves, and I have the pet peeves all listed, so you don't have to remember them all right now. Lettering on a blueprint is always in all capitals. Always, always, always. The only exception I make is the little C in McMaster car. I can live with that. Okay, revision. Let's change it from three to four. Uh, vendor and vendor part number do not appear on the prints, so you don't need to change those. Those will become important when we do the bill of material or the list of stuff that goes in your machine. And then the part number, let's change it from 1000 to 999. I'm going to say OK. I'll save it. Exit out of the model. And there you go. My change title, 9999, Rev4, all that's coming from the model. Now we gotta fix the rest of this stuff. Can you remind me how to exit out of the model again? Sure. So to get into the model, just click on open part. To get back to the drawing out of the model, just use the little X in the upper right for close. As soon as I close that, I bounce back. Could you just bring that um, page back up for a second about like the property names and stuff? Sure. So I'm opening the part. I'm going back to my attribute list under file properties. And this is where I change all the stuff that drives my title block. What does a uh, revision mean? Okay, so when you're out in the world, let's say you're working on, I don't know, a snowmobile carburetor for Polaris. Maybe you wanna change something about it. Maybe you wanna add, I don't know, a vacuum port or something like that. Something that's gonna make the production model different from what it is today. You have to account for every single change all the way back to the original introduction of that part. And we number them. So let's get out of this, we'll get out of this. If you just created it, would it be zero or would it be one? Different companies do it differently. So some places will do zero. I like to see a dash or a negative sign as the initial release. Okay, so as you change this part over the lifetime of its use, you're gonna create a grid under here and all those changes are gonna be recorded right on the print. So you're gonna put the zone and by zone, I mean 
let's say I change the thickness. So the zone would be E8. The rev might be, I don't know, it's at rev four right now. So there should be four entries here describing what changed. So you'd have the, the uh, new rev number, what changed in here, the date it changed, and who approved the change. This is really, really common, very common format out in the world. So if I've done it right, whatever is on this print, I should be able to read what's in the description and I should roll back this model all the way to what it was when it was first produced. That's what revisioning is all about. And we're gonna do just a baby, baby simple version of that. Just so you can um, get- I have another question. Shoot. How would you label that counterboard hole right there? Ah, very good question. So we go insert, annotation, and hole call out. Click on the edge, and it does it for you. So that's all we need if we were gonna be labeling it on the blueprint for you? Yep. Okay. Same with the other hole, right? Okay, the other hole is a little bit tricky. So, and the problem is you have no way to locate it. Whenever you dimension something, your view must always be perpendicular to what you're looking at. So for example, in this one, you can't really dimension this view. Let's see, if, see what 2020 does. Yeah, it's trying to throw in an angle. Last year, it more or less let me do it. Well, you we can do that and this. And that's deceiving because what that actually is, this 2.882 is the straight line distance from here to here. That is not the distance along the face. Kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but if I do want to mention that, Yeah, let's see, put that over here. So I need to look at that face so that my eye is looking straight onto the surface. And I'm gonna do that with an auxiliary view. Lettering always starts at A. It's another thing I get really crazy over. This class does not allow me nearly enough time to teach really good drafting, but I gotta work with what I've got. Something like that. Anyway, you can move the views around. But the story that's being told here with this auxiliary view, my eye is looking in the direction of the arrow. So now I'm looking directly at this face. Okay, I thought those arrows were like a cross section thing. Sometimes they are, but not in this case. Either way, in either case, it says this bar right here is the cutting bar, and then my eye looks in the direction of the arrow. So because this is out in space, it's not cutting anything. It's not a section view. 
Okay, so now let's drop in a dimension. Okay, so do not fall into this trap. So if I come and I measure from this edge, which is this edge right here, and I come down to the hole, measuring along the face, it's 3.464 inches. And I go over 0.5 from this edge. It is not 2.882. I've seen this trip up a lot of young engineers. Okay. So always measure distances along the face, looking perpendicular. Uh, Mr. Abadessa? Sir. Sorry, um, how do you do that sketch with the two A arrows? Okay, kind of got ahead of ourselves. This is actually from next week's um, okay. lecture. But that's okay, if you guys are curious, we can do it. So it's insert, drawing view, and projected, uh, excuse me, sorry, auxiliary. So I choose an auxiliary view because I want my view to look directly at a surface. And I have to choose the surface that I want to look at. So I click on the edge and that drops in the view and little arrow lines. I'll move the arrows like this. My SolidWorks crashed. I gotta restart my computer, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so I choose the edge to get the alignment from. And then I always put the uh, auxiliary view arrows looking right at the face. So my eye is looking in the direction of the arrow and I put the view just beyond it. This one, I wouldn't care if you put this on a second page or something like that. There are times when you're gonna run out of room and that's, it's totally fine to put something like this on a second page. And the reason that it's okay is because I clearly am labeling the direction that I'm looking in. So when the machinist says, oh, what is this face? You see, or she, my capstone machinist was a woman. Uh, that person is gonna see the lettered view. They can come back, look at the lettered arrow, they say, oh, I'm looking in this direction. I know where I am. So that's why it's okay to put this on another page or move it around. All right, kind of got ahead of ourselves on that, but okay. That was a lot of information thrown at you guys really, really fast. So let's see. Let's kind of finish this up then. So let's get rid of sheet two. I gave you guys a sheet two automatically so that you don't have to go in and load it up. I find it much more convenient. So we can, we can just get rid of it. Actually, before we go, let's, let's take a look at sheet two. So I can come down to the little tab at the bottom for sheet two. Sheet two is blank. So for a simple part, you won't need it. What I would have you look at though is the title block. It's much, much smaller. All that other stuff over here, all the tolerance block, all of the how do I read this information, it's not on the second block. And there's a simple reason for that. It's because of something we call the one truth rule. Whenever you do drafting, 
really any kind of engineering, you want to say one thing and only have one thing for a source of information. Because if you say it in two places, you run the risk of a conflict. Okay, there's nothing worse on a manufacturing floor than having two documents. One says do, do this, one document says do this. What do I believe? You have no idea. Your process is totally lost. And in the case of a Dodge Durango plant, anytime they shut the line down, it's a million dollars an hour as of 1991. Okay, so it's probably five million dollars an hour now. You don't want to ever cause confusion. So that's why we say things once and only once. Let's get rid of that sheet. Okay, so we've got our views on. We need to put enough dimensions on that we can uh, tell the machinist how to make all this stuff. So let's see, we've got three and four and a half. That describes our triangle. Because there's no angle here, I can assume it's a right triangle. Okay, that's reasonable. We've got our auxiliary view. I need to tell the machinist where to put this hole and what kind of hole this is. So I'm gonna locate that hole. Let's see, put it right there. So I'm gonna come 3.465 down and half an inch over. The machinist needs to know what kind of hole it is. So we'll do another hole call out. Insert, annotation, and hole call out. So again, I was really cool, I used the hole wizard. So now I'm getting these really nice callouts with all the proper symbols. Machinist knows drill a quarter inch hole and go down 0.75. Let's get rid of this. And that's about it. So we have everything we need to make this part, let's see, we should clean up. Oh, where did that go? Okay, that was interesting. If you double click on the arrow heads, it flips the view direction. Again, getting way ahead of ourselves. And why it blew away my dimensions, I don't know. Okay, so I know the maximum height, I know the width, I know the thickness. I know how far down to come to drill this hole. That's nice. We'll go put our hole call out back in since it seems to have gotten messed up. There's our hole call out. And we're looking pretty good. So what don't I know about how to make this thing? Andrew, what don't I know? Do you have material on here? 
Exactly. I didn't put the material on. So I can't tell if this is plywood or if this is aluminum or depleted uranium. The way I, the place that I like to see the material note is right up here on the left where I've been showing you guys. So let's put a note in. We come under the annotation tab and we'll click note. Stretch out a little box. And I always write notes. I number them. I specifically call out material, a colon, and I'm going to say something like 6061 T6 aluminum. I why click put, out. Go ahead. Why put this in the model if you have to type it in manually in the blueprint? I could have set it up that way. Absolutely. I could have the material poured over. I just chose not to. Uh, strictly a choice thing. Okay. So that was a lot of information, probably further than I should have gone. But let's go back and see what else we've got in the lesson. And we are going to do gobs of examples. So don't worry if you guys didn't get all of that the first time or the second or third time. Okay. So to reiterate, when you turn in your homework, always, always, always include the model file with the drawing file. Otherwise, when I open it up, I just get X's and I can't grade it. Okay, let's talk about paper because eventually somebody's going to want to print this thing. In the US, we go by letter size paper. So eight and a half by 11. That is your standard letter paper that comes out of any copier. And when we use that for drafting, we call that A size. There are all kinds of different sizes out there. And if you go up to the next size, which I bet you can't guess what it's called, if the first one is A, the second one is B. So what you do is you take the shortest dimension and you double it. So on the A size, the short dimension is eight and a half. And then when I go up to the next size, I double the short side to 17 and it becomes 11 by 17, and that's B size. This is by far the most common print size out there because you can use a common everyday ordinary office printer to make your prints. If you wanna go bigger than that, you're gonna double the shortest side again. So the shortest side is 11 and we go to 22 by 17, which is C size. Double the short side again, we go up to D size. D size is probably the biggest one that I've ever used normally for something that wasn't like crazy. Like when I printed out the cross section of the F-15 engine, that was like, I don't know, 14 feet long. That was a little obscene. What did you print that out for? Uh, I had a design review at Pratt & Whitney and I needed to show where my changes were gonna be relative to the other stuff in the engine. So I just, I went to my design review, I rolled this huge piece of paper out on the table and it was really good for my reviewers to see the stuff. Okay, so papers are sized with letters, A, B, C, D. There is E and F, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay, I kind of went through this already. So when you create the views, it's just like what I showed you on class one. You put the object in a glass box, you project 
the visible edges onto the glass, they become solid lines. Any internal edges you project onto the glass as dotted lines. Okay, that's how you can know what you see and what you don't see. Dotted stuff is the unseen stuff. Okay, we don't show the fold lines of the glass box and we just assume they're there. So if I actually did put this object in a glass box, that fold line would be right here. Okay, you do not have to show all six sides of a glass box. As long as you put down enough information to fully define the part, you're good. So for example, with this wedge, I only need the top and the front view. And this is the front view because it has the minimum number of hidden lines. Okay, you guys were asking about, whoops, about revisions. Here's a good example of a revision. So at location D6, going to Rev2, I changed the whole diameter from 375 to 0.495. I did it on this day and some guy named SEA was the approver. And I actually show where the change occurred with this little delta symbol. Again, whole lesson on that, but just to show you what it looks like. And that's how we record a change. Okay, the format, when somebody says format, what they're talking about is the border, okay, including this title block. And let's see. So the perimeter, you almost always have letters and numbers that create a grid. So when we want to talk about the zone or where something happens, you can call out something easy like E8, which would be right in here. Okay. So it's really nice if you're talking to a manufacturing person on the phone and they say, well, do you see dimension 5.00? There might be half a dozen of those, but if they say the 5.00 at location B7, okay, now you know what you're looking at. Okay, now it's your turn. So let's go see what we got for homework parts and stuff to try. So homework block, let's download that and take a look at what I'm gonna start you off with. Okay, we're gonna start off pretty gentle with this one. So I've got this little block with a step in it and it's got a threaded hole. And I know it's threaded because I see the dotted line going around the circle. Okay, so go ahead and start on this one now. Uh, Mr. Abadasa, it doesn't let me open it. It's actually saying that it's a music video or something. Yeah, I don't, know what, I don't know what Google Drive's problem is. Just go ahead and download it. As soon as your computer sees an SLD PRT, it's gonna associate it with SolidWorks. So we don't, we're not even making it, we're just putting it on the blueprint? Yes, correct. Yeah, I can't even open it on solid on SOLIDWORKS. Yeah. It just sends me to, uh, um, um, how do you say any, um, what is it? Music player? Groove music? Okay, that's weird. I haven't seen that one before. <laughs> can I share my screen? I can show you. 
Try yeah. right clicking it and press like open with or something like that. I've tried. It doesn't work either. Okay, then try it like this. So I'm going to close that out. I'll close this out. Click on file, open. And let's see, homework block over in downloads. Does that do anything better for you? Uh, can you repeat the procedures again? Yep. So download it. Yeah. And let me get rid of it. I'm going to click file, mm -hmm. open. I'm going to go to the downloads folder. I'm going to choose the homework block and say open. No, it doesn't work. It gives me, uh, it's invalid. How about the rest of you guys? Is it opening for the rest of the class? Yeah, it works. It works for me, but I'm running into other issues. Okay. Then Jack, go ahead and show me your screen. Yep. Um, just cancel some things over here. Okay. And <clears throat> let, me, let me make sure I've got, there you go. I had to click on multiple. Okay, it's all yours. Yep. Um, so I go here. I download it again and I do open, right? And it says Groove Music Default, which is very weird. So you go on other and there's no. Yeah, um, because that, that's still out on Chrome. So cancel out of that mm -hmm. and get rid of that screen too. Okay, go back to your SolidWorks. Mine said the audio thing too. And then I just downloaded it um, at the bottom of the screen or whatever. I don't know where you went now. but And then it said it again when I opened up SolidWorks, when I tried to open up the actual download file, and then I just clicked out of it, and then it showed up on my screen. So yeah, It's this one, right? Homework block, solid, solid print, right? Yep. Okay, I do open. And it gives me the following file names enter were invalid. It's not the right file type. I don't know how you change it, but I noticed it's not the right file type. Well, somehow the download appended a bunch of junk onto the end. So let's go to the Windows Explorer or the File Explorer. Oh, where? You mean? Go to, yeah, right there. Okay. And go over to the part you just downloaded. Uh, where it's not here. Why isn't it here? Uh, that is weird. Just. Yeah, why isn't it at the top? Just, yeah, I'll just put it here. Okay. So then. He has to right click and rename it. And get yeah, rid of the .mp4. Right, but he doesn't have file extensions turned on. And that's what's messing with you because it looks correct there, but it's not. There's another dot MP4 on the end. So right click on that and let's do, okay, that's weird because mine comes up with rename when I do that. You're not right clicked on it. I swear to God I did. It should turn blue if you right click on it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Okay, rename. Yeah. It still doesn't have the extension shown. Can you change it under properties? There's a way to change the folder properties so that you show the extension. Uh, yeah, try properties. Let's see what that does. Uh, I would delete it and re-download it. Yeah, it's just weird that it, it tacked on that. Mine popped up with the audio file too when I went to download it. And then I just canceled out of that and there was another option to download. And I just hit download and then it came into the right file. Because yeah, all I did was just click the download. 
I'll just I try see. again. Then. Yeah, that's. You don't click. I thought there was an, like another one besides that download. Don't don't download that. Oh okay. Oh, you're in you're in Firefox. Yeah, yeah. Download from up there. I think that worked for me. Yeah. See, I brought it down with Chrome. Hmm. Oh. Oh, and then I'll try with another browser. Then I'll. Uh, yeah, just give it a shot with Chrome. Professor Medusa? Yes. How did you do the part where at the beginning, when you got, had the front view and then you got all of the dimensions to pop up, what feature was that with? Okay. So that was showing the design annotations. Let's see, am I... Okay, so I've got my block and I'm ready to start drafting. So I'm gonna click on file, make drawing from part. I choose my piece part template and I say, okay. And then it comes in drastically wrong. So let's go about fixing all of this mess. The first thing is the scale is terrible. So I'm gonna click this view down here in the bottom left. Okay. And I'm gonna say import design, import annotation and design annotation. And what that's gonna do is bring in all of the sketch numbers that can be seen in that view. Okay, and this is a terrible call out, this half 13 tapped hole. It's got lowercase, which is totally wrong and terrible. And it doesn't have the tap drill size. It's showing it in the profile, which is awful. Because I could have a whole bunch of holes lined up and I would have no idea which one I'm pointing to. So that's really yucky to use the technical term. I'm gonna click on this front view and that brings up my drawing, or excuse me, my view menu over here. So now I'm gonna go in, first off, I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Instead of two to one or double size, let's make it one to one. So that's going to fit on the paper a whole lot better. These all need to be the same scale, right? Each yes. View? Yes. Can you do that again one more time for me? Yep. Uh, well, let's just. Yeah. Why is undo being so awful today? I have another question. Do you see where on the bottom corner on the right hand side, it says your name? Should we change it to our names in this correct date? Yes, absolutely. And I'll go over how to do that in just a second. Oh, by the way, Mr. Abadesse solved the problem. Nice, okay. So I've got, I've got my initial views that are just kind of dumped on. I'm gonna come over here to import annotation and design annotation. Mm, mine's not showing that. You gotta click on the view first. Yeah, I am clicked on the view. I believe I am. It says drawing view 28. Okay, and that's fine. Okay. But what I wanna do more right now is just fix the views so that they're not huge. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using the sheet scale, I'm gonna click on use custom scale. I'm gonna go from two to one to one to one.
And I'm just gonna delete these views for right now. Do we typically start by deleting all but one of the views? That's what I do. Probably be on the screen. Mark's got the generator over the. Yeah, yeah, he sent a picture in the Snapchat group chat. So. Yeah, so we'll have. And I'm going to get rid of the tap cool. hole call out. So I got something like this. And now I have to make sure that my views always line up. All the edges should always line up. So when I put the views back on, I'm gonna do project it. I'm gonna choose on the initial view. I'll come over and I'll drag over and click. And I'll drag and click. And now I want to put the isometric in. I'm going to get the isometric by clicking on the front view right here. And I'm going to drag it at a 45 right up here. The isometric always has the hidden lines turned off. So I'll click on the view. I'll turn off the hidden lines. So that's good. I'm okay with these little ones that are right up at the surface because the threads really break through right there. So, you know, that's okay. We can live with that. So how is this whole, whole call out better, I take it, on the top? Yes, because I'm putting my arrow to it and I specifically can see which one I'm referring to. Okay. If I do it in the side view, there could be a whole bunch of holes all lined up and I have no idea which one I'm explicitly talking about. So you How don't- How do you get the um, other view again? The projected view? Okay. You're talking this view or this view? Uh, the first one you clicked on. This one? Yeah. Okay, let's get rid of that. So I'll just click on it and press delete. So that is a projected view. I'm gonna insert, drawing view, and projected. Click on the front view, drag it to 45. Click to drop it. Okay, this is an isometric. So we should always have the hidden lines turned off. I'm gonna click on the view and I'm gonna come right over here and I'm gonna say hidden lines removed, the center icon. Okay, typically your isometrics are gonna be smaller than the other views. You know, they're a visualization aid and that's all they are. They are not for any kind of you know, dimension stating kind of stuff. So I'm gonna bring the scale down a little bit. Instead of one to one, I'll make that half scale. So that's half the size of the other views, right? Correct. Okay, and the other views are half the size of the object. Uh, No, they are full scale. So it's oh, okay. one, one to one. My last question about those holes, do you just assume they're through unless they're measured, labeled a certain depth? I guess obviously it's all the way through. You can see it in this case, but. Exactly. So it's UNC, Unified National Course, means it's threaded. And I can see the two parallel dotted lines for the hidden edge in here. That's telling me that it's threaded all the way through. 
So in this sketch, we don't even need that other one, right? This one right here? Yeah. Correct. Because I have these two, um, this will give me all the information that I need. So I can delete that. So that hole is a half inch in diameter? Is that what the one half means or does that refer to the threads? It refers to the threads, uh, but typically your th the dotted line is probably going to be just half inch or a, a little bit over that. Do we need so, the label, the dotted line and the circle, or just the dotted line or just the circle? Neither. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this. This is a terrible call out. Let me show you the good call out first for comparison though. So we're going to do another whole call out. We'll do insert annotation and whole call out. I'm going to click on the whole edge. That's a nice call out. Oh, so that has the diameter. That's okay. what I was asking about. Yeah. So the top line, this is your tap drill. Before you go to make the threads, you're going to come with a 0.422 drill. You're going to drill the center hole and then you're going to use a half 13 tap and you're going to go all the way through the part. Okay. And this is all coming from the use of the whole wizard, which is why I've been banging on you guys so hard about that. Otherwise, best case, you would get this and you would not get the proper tap drill size. So always, always, always use the whole wizard. Can you just go over how you got that call out again? Sure. Okay, so it's insert, annotation, and go down a whole call out. I'm going to choose the solid edge and then click where I want to drop it. And there's your call out. Thank you. How do we title it again? Okay. So the drawing title, the part number, the rev, that's all coming out of the model. That's coming out of your part attributes. So first off, whenever you're dealing with SolidWorks, save often. So I'm gonna save it. It's creating a new file right next to the model file. When I go to save it, it's giving me a Confirm drawing view update. Yep. So the sometimes you, sometimes you have to update the views to get all the latest changes. That's fine. Go ahead and allow it. Okay. And we're going to go back over to the model now. We're going to change the attributes so that the title block fills out properly. So I'm back in the model. I come down to properties. Oh my God, look what happened. Some joker didn't fill out the attributes. What? Yeah, so I just remade the whole part into the current template. Exactly. So now I'm forced to type all this silly stuff back in. So description. This is why you really, really, really want it in your template. So, uh, what are we going to call this? Uh, homework that one. That same thing happened to me. Is that like bad or? Well, I intentionally did this to drive home the idea that your title block is being fed by the part attributes. So you oh, must, so like 
You must, must, must have your attributes filled out. Is there another thing that we can click on where it all be there? No. So no. for like those in the part number and stuff, does it matter what we put in there for those? Because you didn't give us like a specified thing to put in there. Yes, I did. So mm -hmm. you got to put the stuff in that you put in back when we did the part attributes. So for example, there was description. That's the title of your drawing. I gave you part underscore number. That is text. So one, two, three, four, revision. Let's say it's an initial release, so I'll just do a minus sign. Okay, so back in the back when we did attributes, I had you put vendor and vendor part number. Uh, let's see the vendor, maybe this is pink master car. Does it matter like what we say for vendor or should we just do the same thing you're saying? For this example, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, when you do your final project, then yes, it will matter because I've given you specific part numbers and vendors. So for like all the homeworks and stuff, what should we have it for? I think this is the only one that I intentionally messed with you guys to drive home how important the attributes are. So um, it like for the homework and stuff, we can just have all the attributes the same as like the example you're giving us right now. Sure. Okay. Okay. So I've got the attributes. I'm going to save it. And when I close the model file, and go back to the drawing, voila, my title block is filled out. How do you change the scale and the name? On okay, the all you have to do is click on it. Oh, see, thank you. So if you click in it, yep. So if I, and I've been having trouble with this. My video card isn't happy this year. So like right now, it doesn't look like it's changing, but if I type in, once I hit enter, then it updates. I don't know if you guys are gonna see that same thing. Yeah, that's happening online. Okay. Last year it ran perfectly. Uh, this year it's gonna be a putz. I noticed it says a sheet one of two. Do I understand the sheets are parts of the pages? You mentioned having three pages in a package. So yes, for when we do assemblies, you're gonna do a three page assembly package. For right now with just a single simple piece part, it's gonna be sheet one of one because you only need one sheet to describe the object. Okay. Your... It only let me change my name like by typing in if I like double clicked on the name and then it let me actually type it in. The other way it didn't. Okay. I mean, it's just. So even though our, um, like our scale is one to one for the two objects and the, the little one that's two to one, is, does that matter? It does not. No, the isometric okay. does not count. I noticed that it says sheet two on the bottom left. Should we delete that or just leave it? Sheet two in the bottom left. Yes, all the way in the bottom, not on the blueprint, but like on the bottom left SolidWorks. Oh, yes, you do want to delete that. Yeah, so you can just click on the tab and hit delete.
Yes, excellent point. Anything that's not used, get rid of it. Because that just becomes an opportunity for confusion. And that's what we want to avoid at all cost. Uh, quick question. Yes, go for it. Uh, what was the vendor part number for this part? Oh, uh, just I put eight six seven five three zero nine. You can put one two three. I don't care. Just put a set of characters in there. All right. Thank you. It's not going to show up. Do you have a standard for how you want the dimensions? I know some people say not to put dimensions outside of like in between, like to only leave dimensions in between two parts or to not have lines crossing. Do you have any preferred conventions like that? So I try to minimize the amount of line crossing. Uh, and that's just a clarity thing. Um, so like right here, however, Okay, this is something that's, that's really bad. So I've called out 1.5 on this side. Actually, let me do one more thing. I've also heard of not wanting um, like the lines from the dimension lines touching the part. Does that matter to you? Okay, SolidWorks sets that. So yes, you do not want it touching, but that's not something I'm gonna get all kinds of crazy over. Okay. So like right here, where Yeah, it's that's touching. like the kind of line that I was talking about. Yeah. If you guys can do good drafting and just fully define the object, okay, fine. I'm not gonna be that nuts. Okay. Okay, but I this- I see that it says, um under define in the bottom, does that have, does that matter? Yeah, don't worry about that in drafting. Okay. Okay, but I do have something going on here that's really bad. Okay, I am gonna be very fussy about double dimensioning. So going back to that one truth rule, I've called out the height as 1.5 here, and then over here, I call out the height using those two dimensions. Okay, that's bad. And there's a really important reason why that's so bad. So if I have three decimal places, I'm telling the manufacturing people that they can hit this target within plus or minus 0 0.005 inches. Okay. So that's, that's pretty reasonable. But then I come over here and I say, you can have 0 0.005 for this dimension and you can have 0 0.005 for this. So that means this side can vary by 0 0.01, which is different than the story I'm telling over here. Okay, that's really, really bad. You don't ever want to do that. That's part of why double dimensioning is so bad. So the way to get around that is simply delete this. So now it says I can be plus or minus 005 on this dimension. I can be plus or minus 005 on this dimension. And then this thickness is whatever it turns out to be. So what if you deleted the dimension on the left instead of the right? Would that just mean less tolerance? Nope, that, that's a perfectly fine way to do it as well. So I could get rid of that and I could put that. And so like that's, it, that's okay. Would this have 0.1 instead of 0.05 for tolerance? No. Okay. The, the 005 is coming from my tolerance block right down here. So I have 005 for here and I have 005 allowance up here. Okay. So yeah, this part could actually be in a worse case, it could be uh, 1.510 tall. And that's, that's what I'm saying is allowable. 
but with if you dimensioned on the other side, that would only be half the error, right? Correct. And that's where you got to make a desi design decision about what's important to you. Okay. All right, so let's see. Do I want material properties in the corner as well? Absolutely. Mr. Abadeza? Yes. My connection cut out right as I was asking a question, so I'm not sure if you heard me or not. I did not. Go ahead and fire again. Um, so the homework that you assigned to us earlier today, do you want a drawing for that too? Yes. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Are you talking about the sheet metal? Yes. No, no, I just want a model for the sheet metal part, that electronics enclosure. Okay. You want so, us yeah. to put a material on this one? Absolutely, always gotta have a material. Okay, so how do you do that again, sorry? So let's go back and we're gonna get it off the model, whoops. That probably wasn't good. Okay. So I'm going to come over and I'm gonna open the part. Aha, AISI 1015 steel. So I'll come over here. I'm gonna go under annotations and I'll choose a note. I'll type notes colon. Notice I'm typing in all capitals, because prints are always, always, always in all capitals. There's my material note. How do you delete the dimensions? I'm only seeing a way to hide them. Okay. So what I do is I click on the extension line right below and then press the delete key. Yes, they can be hard to get rid of. Does it matter where you put the notes for the material? I like it in the upper left. Another thing that I'm gonna harp on you guys about is that we never, ever, ever put information over here. Okay, so as this part goes through its life cycle, you're gonna have the revisions that go down, 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 down. And what happens is you are not allowed to move these views when you're in a company. If I even wanna move this view from here to here, I have to do a full engineering change order, and that is painful. I have to go around to purchasing, manufacturing, uh, engineering design, validation, and I gotta get sign off from all those people. It takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money, all to move a view. So the better thing to do is just leave this space open for future rev additions. So at what point are you no longer allowed to make changes? Okay, so you will have a product release. So you're gonna go off, you're gonna do all your design work, you're gonna do your validation, you'll test your prototypes, then you'll, uh, you'll have a production run. So for example, when I was at Dade Bearing slash DuPont, when we made our alpha prototypes, we were completely in charge of everything. We could change anything we wanted willy-nilly, didn't matter, go up to the lab, test it, everything was great. And we did that through the alpha prototypes and the beta prototypes. 
when we got to the gamma prototypes, those were built by the manufacturing guys on the floor. And at that point, they took away ownership of all of our models. They turned it over to the product data manager and they said, manufacturing, you are now in control. At that point, we could not change our models anymore without doing an engineering change order. And that's, that's pretty typical. So yeah, you'll have ownership through alpha and beta prototypes. Once you're done prototyping, uh, you give up ownership. And of course, so when, I was gonna say, the real ownership belongs to the company. Absolutely. You've taken their money in exchange for your time, so they own it. Just like uh, when I was at Pratt & Whitney, some of the stuff I did got patented. Pratt & Whitney owns the patent on that stuff because they were paying me to do it. Patent a classified object, I wonder. That's off topic. Um, so believe it or not, there's nothing classified in the F-15 or F-22 engines. They are actually owned by the federal government. The government paid Pratt to develop that engine and they own the whole thing. So they can actually walk into Pratt, say, give me all the prints for it. I want it made by Rolls Royce. And they could go to Rolls Royce and have the F-100 made by those guys. Unlikely, but they could do it. So how do we group together the blueprint and the model to send to you? Okay. Let me do one more thing and then I will answer that question. So the last thing we do is cylindrical faces always get a center line. To put in a center line, it's insert, annotations, and we come down to center line. Doesn't matter if it's visible or hidden, you always put a center line in it. Okay. So now we step back and we say, have I sized all the features? Have I located all of the features? So I know how to make this cutout. I know that it's 1.5, excuse me, 3.0 minus 1.25 in width. I know it goes all the way across. I know the depth. This cutout is good. Do I know how big a block to get initially? Uh, yes. So I need three by two and the height is gonna be this, okay. So I've got the type of hole and I've got the location of the hole. I'm good there. And I've got the notes. All right, I'm good. And I've got all my annotations. I've got center marks on the holes and center lines in profile. Next thing I do, save it. And when I close it, I'll go back over to where it was. And here's the two files that you would send me. So there's homeworkblock.sldprt. That's your part file, that's your model. And then sldrw, that is gonna be your drawing file and you must send me both of them. I don't really care if they're zipped. Zipping is important when we get to assemblies, but I must have both of them from you. Don't you already have the one you sent us? Uh, yes, I do. But suffice it to say, just send them to me. Okay. You, might, you might have to change the attributes or something like that. All right, I have talked way too much. So that was a lot of stuff and we will do a bunch more examples in the next class. Let's see, what is in the chat? I had a question about 
homework number eight. So if you got to leave, go ahead and leave folks. That's totally fine. So question on homework eight. Yeah, you never uh, defined what the radius should be on the uh, bends. You can just use the default of 0.08. All right, thank you. So for this week's homework, there's the electronics cover and the drawing of the homework block, right? Correct. Okay, so the... Actually, let's wait on the homework block. So just the electronics cover for Monday, 8 a.m. Because the problem is I didn't get this far in the other section. So it's not fair to those guys for me to assign the homework block. Okay. Is it okay if I already sent you the homework block? Oh my God, no. <laughs> it's totally fine, Laura. All right, so we got eight minutes left. Anybody want to talk about anything otherwise? How come, how come the other class didn't get that far? Is, don't they have like three hours in total with the two different classes? Yeah, they got the exact same amount of time you guys do. Um, partly I screwed up and ended the class early and I was also having some technical problems. I didn't do a good job explaining the whole um, file downloads thing and that turned into a mess. It took way more time than it should have. I mean, bottom line, I didn't execute well and I own that. So I got to tell those guys the stuff that I told you. Actually, my SolidWorks is frozen right now, so I very much appreciate extra time to get the homework walk done. Okay, glad it worked for you. So that's for question. next week, right? Yeah, we'll do the homework block for next week. It's a good starting exercise. That, Start you off nice and simple before we get real crazy. I have a question about the blueprint. Go ahead, Shay. Um, so I see that you have the drawing title down in the bottom right corner. Okay. And I have it in the properties. Why don't part. you go ahead and share your screen so I can see what you're referring to. Okay. So it's not down here and okay. when I go to properties, it's the titles so, there. Is so correct. And what's going on is the title block is pulling from the model file attributes. Okay. So I'd have to go back to the model and change that. Right. So hit cancel. Go over to the drawing manager. No, you can get it right from here. Okay. Cancel out of that. See where it says sheet one and it's got a little triangle next to it? Hit that little triangle next to sheet one in the drawing manager. There you go. Click on one of those views. And then right click. See where it says open part? Yep. Oh, okay. So and now you can go in here and change the part attributes. Okay. And you got to go under okay. custom. And this is where you're gonna enter the description and part underscore number and all of that. Okay, I did that for the blueprint, so I'm assuming I have to do it over again. Right, so you did it for the blueprint, but that's not where the blueprint is looking for information. Okay. The blueprint is looking to the model to get its information. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else in our last three minutes, folks? So I'm modeling um, the Stirling engine parts this week and next. Um, how do I know what dimensions to give the pusher rods and whatnot if I don't, if I haven't built the thing yet? You really don't. Okay. Can we adapt to those later on? Absolutely. Okay. I'll just estimate then. Exactly. I think I can scrounge up everything I need to if really necessary, except for displacer and the elbow, just some stuff lying around. Okay. 
So if you can come to Crosby, I can certainly give you a set of displacers. That, excuse me, that's easy. Okay, the video I saw you steal wool, but... Um... You're welcome to try that. Uh, in past years, that hasn't worked well because what happens is you got to get just the right amount of packing and you'll either be leaking air or you'll be dragging on the sidewall or something like that. Whereas the CNC foam discs, they just fit every time. Great. Okay, thanks. Anybody else before I call it? Yeah, I had a question about this morning's lecture. My power was out, so I didn't, uh, I wasn't there for that. That was just uh, lecture eight, right? Uh, yes, it was. Right. That was the sheet metal stuff. All right. And there's just the one homework problem that came out of that. All right, thank you. Um, when do you think a good timeline for like modeling our parts for our Sterling engine would be? I mean, do as much as you know right now. So mm -hmm. do those six parts that I, I yep. put up prints for. Um, you don't know about features at the assembly level and simulating machining castings. So that's going to come along in about three to four weeks. So as long as you get the can done, the displacer disc done, mm. uh, that kind of stuff. If you want to read ahead and read up on how to do assemblies, you can just watch the video in like 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really easy. Um, so if you think your other classes are going to make you really busy, it might be worth doing. You also said you uh, are into maple farming. Well, I used to do maple sugaring at my other farm. Uh, unfortunately, all my maple trees now, they're underwater in the spring. We have this thing called a vernal pool that forms. Yeah. So I'd have to drive through like 18 inches of water to get to my maple trees. Not worth it. Yeah, no. I did enjoy it though, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, my family does it as a hobby slash business. Yeah, I, it was great. I would come home from working at Pratt and I'd go out to the sugar shack, light up the boiler and I had to have steam pouring out of every single window. But maybe someday I'll get to do it again. Maybe I'll put in some yeah. tap lines to a central gathering. Yeah, well, I think we, I've had my fair share of it, that's for sure. We got worded up to about 4,500 taps. Oh, man. Yeah, so we really, it was, my, that's what my grandpa does, so, and he's built, like, all of our equipment we use. He's uh, homemade it, so. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's a lot of sap. Yeah. Yeah, we made 1,500 gallons of syrup last year, 15 or 16. Oh, my God. I mean, I was happy getting like one or two gallons. Yeah, it's I a just, lot. I just didn't have the time. Yeah, this year has been awful because we haven't had anywhere to uh, sell it. So we're, we're kind of sitting on a lot of syrup right now. Yeah, but it keeps well. And it, yeah. Once we get a vaccine for this foolish COVID stuff, I think that's going to go a long way toward making life normal. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's one industry for like this kind of stuff, like designing new equipment, maple farming. It's just, I think things are just starting up there. So I'm excited. Yeah, if somebody would make a really good, you know, like 50 gallon a year size setup, mm -hmm. I, I think there'd be a lot, lot going there. Yeah. I've seen some well, really small RO setups, but yeah. They're a little pricey for it. Yeah, we wrote a grant for our RO. We got a pretty good deal on it. Nice. It does 1,600 gallons of sap an hour. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it's a lot. Of, it's, it's fun. The first few weeks are fun. 
and then it's then everybody's mad because they've been drug out for a lot longer than they'd hoped because <laughs> everybody has day jobs. Yeah, sounds familiar. It does. It takes forever. Yeah, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of cool when you said that when you uh, last class you mentioned your maple pans with the sheet metal. Yeah, yeah, I got some really nice ones. I, I got lucky. I found them used, yeah. so they weren't horribly expensive. Yep. All right. All right. Well, I have to sign off at this point, folks. A any last questions before I book out of here? Yeah, nothing. Okay. Then I will see you guys next week or office hours if you want to come by. Yeah, I'll be by. Okay. Thank Sounds you. good. Good night.